Hey friends, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Take a seat over there. I have some questions to ask you. I got you. I got you. I'm actually, I'm actually Ash with, with Gent Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today I've got 10 unappreciated fragrances that you need to know whether they're unappreciated because they're actually kind of old nowadays and people have just forgotten about them or because they came out and weren't a massive hit. Either way, they're still unappreciated, in my opinion. We got a nice mixture of scents here. Some are more expensive, some are ultra crazy cheap, and some are in the middle. And today, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about these, some unappreciated fragrances that I think you should know about. Let's check them out. Hopefully none of you were sweating when I introduced myself as Chris Hansen. I am a master of disguise. I'm gonna kick it off with Bottega Veneta Illusione. Now to be fair, Bottega Veneta doesn't get a huge amount of love in general. Like Bottega Veneta Pour Homme and the flankers that came after that. There are some people that really love those and we'll talk about them and say, man, so classy. So fantastic. Illusione though, talked about even less than those. It just kind of came out with a whimper and then this one has bitter orange and lemon in the top. And keeping with the Bottega Veneta theme is very classy and gentlemanly. Only much fresher here than what you'll find in Bottega Veneta Pour Homme. You have woods as this dries down, cedar, vetiver, and fir, but it doesn't really have a huge punch to it. This one isn't a, a fragrance that projects heavily. Instead, it's a clean, almost classic cologne style of fragrance for men. Citrusy and woodsy, smells absolutely fantastic. Great fragrance for the spring. Now this next one gets hated on a lot, and I know some of you are gonna see me put this fragrance up and you're gonna do your little head shake. Mm. It's the one gray from Dolce & Gabbana. It's so weird. It's like I have to apologize for liking this fragrance or something every time I show it. Now with this fragrance, I guess the idea was, hey, you know that scent we have, the one? Yeah, yeah, that one, the one that uh, is a really evening-based fragrance, a, a date night sort of fragrance, very sweet and spicy, and sexy. That one, what if that were an office scent though? That's pretty much what this is. I mean, it's taking the one DNA and then scrubbing it and scrubbing it and scrubbing it and scrubbing it until it's this clean version of Dolce & Gabbana's The One, and then you take a nice little vetiver and sprinkle that in there too. And for some people that didn't work. Some people smell that and they just think, no, this is not the one. I refuse to accept this as part of my the one lineup, I refuse. Other people like myself smelled it and went, yeah, that's pretty nice, I like it. Let's keep it going, more Dolce & Gabbana, but this one is from their Velvet line and it's Velvet Bergamot. Now the Velvet line doesn't get all that much hype, doesn't get talked about all that much. Nobody's going to be confusing the Velvet line as far as hype goes to uh, Chanel Les Exclusives. People see those private line Chanel's and they go, ooh, mm, oh, yes, fantastic. They see velvet, anything, and they go, trash. A lot of them are very good though. The presentation is very nice on these as well. One good thing about the velvet line is that a lot of times you can get them crazy cheap from discounters, not always, and you have to be patient because sometimes they'll be out of stock, sometimes the price won't look all that good, but sometimes you can find those velvet fragrances in that like $80 price range. It's good. So this one's a very pleasant bergamot forward fragrance. You've got pedigrain, you've got orange blossom in there, a little bit of vetiver, very green and fresh, very classy, very well done. And it does smell quite expensive, which makes sense because if you buy this at retail, it ain't cheap. Velvet bergamot and actually a lot of the velvet fragrances, I have some of them back here, are great buys, assuming you get them at a good price. And then it's almost like this little, you know, secret amongst only fragrance people. Good quality, good presentation, exclusivity, and a pretty good price. Not always though. Sometimes the price is wonky at discounters, keep that in mind. Up next, we got Morning Chess from Wilhelm Perfumery. Now this one is decently well known and that's because it does have a similarity to Creed's Aventus. And any fragrance, whether niche or designer or clone, if it has a similarity to Aventus, that means people are gonna know about it at least a little bit. Still yet though, this is a house that doesn't get talked about a huge amount. The presentation is very nice, but some people probably won't enjoy the squished down hockey puck style bottle. And maybe they do lack a little bit of a, a differentiating factor amongst the releases 
in the house because it's all the same bottle, the same color, just the name on the front changes. Bergamot leather, galbanum, and patchouli, some of the notes in the fragrance, a very well done scent that does stand apart actually quite a good amount from Aventus. This is one of those fragrances that I would not say at all is a clone of Aventus. At best, you could say they were a little bit inspired by Aventus and then you know, did a, a big old twist to it. That leather mixes together perfectly with the galbanum as the fragrance dries down. And of course that bergamot in the opening is going to give you that similarity to Aventus when you first spray this on. Just as a heads up, they do carry this one at Twisted Lily. If you ever shop there, whether for this or anything, use code GENTS10, save yourself 10% off. That's good for the entire website. From there, Bottled Tonic. I've talked about this one a bunch over the years because it's mad cheap from discounters. You can pick this up, I believe under $30 cost next to nothing. It's got that Boss Bottle DNA in here, the apple and cinnamon, so this is not one of those flankers that takes what made the, the first fragrance the most popular fragrance and does away with everything that could draw the fragrances together. That's not going on here. Good amount of ginger in here, a touch of bitter orange, and also, once again, vetiver, some of the other notes in the fragrance. I'm a big fan of vetiver. It's a great spring and summertime take on Boss Bottled, a great casual fragrance and office safe as well. If you like the original Boss Bottled and you wish it was a little bit fresher and easier to wear, grab this stuff. Like I said, costs next to nothing. And how about another one that costs next to nothing? Quorum Silver. Been a while since I've talked about this one. I got this many moons ago at uh, Ross or TJ Maxx. I did kind of a first impression review type video of that, like a haul video of what I got from uh, Ross's. And I honed in on the cedar a lot here. The cedar doesn't come across as hardcore as I originally had said in that video, I think. I don't know, I've not actually watched the video and I shot it years ago, so. Good amount of ginger in here. It gives it this very nice, bright freshness when you first spray the fragrance on. Very inviting, it smells fantastic off a tester strip and equally good off skin. You've also got lavender, nutmeg, and pink pepper in there. So again, more of that fresh spiciness coming out. And that cedar does lay a nice base that everything plays off of and you can pick it up really early on, but it's not heavy handed. You know, it doesn't come across like this ugh, big honk of wood that's just kind of laying flat and making everything feel heavy and dense. It's ultra cheap. And when you look at the packaging, you can tell. I mean, this bottle is not good. I mean, it's like all the Quorum bottles. You know, any of these that you buy nowadays, they're gonna have that same cheap look to them. Cap weighs nothing. You've got the, the terrible looking atomizer that doesn't have a collar here. It's just crimped on. I would say on the whole, it'll probably appeal more to guys middle-aged and older, but because of that fresh spiciness and that ginger in the opening, it does have maybe a little more versatility or appeal than you might think when you see that it's a, a quorum release in that ancient crappy bottle. As far as cheapies go, it's a really good one. So from one of the cheapest ones here, to one of the most expensive, Wulong Cha from Nishane. This one has tea, fig, musk, orange, and bergamot as some of the notes in the fragrance. Really nice note breakdown, pretty unique. You don't see tea used all that often. You don't see fig used all that often. And here they're used in tandem. Specifically, it's an oolong tea note that they use in this fragrance. When it comes to Nishane, it's all about those big hype beasts, you know, Ani or Hasavat, or to a lesser extent, Sultan Vetiver, which is my personal favorite, but I understand that the other two are a little bit more hyped overall, a little more loved. This one though can go head to head with those fragrances, assuming you are a fan of tea. Now, of course, tea is not the only thing in here, but that's really for me what this is built off of. That's the focal point. That's the star of the show. It's very nice and fresh. It's sweet. I would say unisex. Ladies can pull this off just as easily as men. It's an extract to parfum, so you're going to get some good bang for your buck there, some nice performance, and overall, just a great smelling scent. Another one that's really good for neutral weather type situations, I'd say. Spring and fall, especially spring. Then I want to talk about 1920, The Origin. The name almost sounds like a science fiction movie about a lost expedition uh, from 100 years ago and what happened to them. So this one has tea also, and it does have more than a passing similarity to Cartier Declaration. The bottle itself, you know, I'm not a, a huge fan of. It's got this kind of two-tone going on. So you have this copper look at the bottom, glass up here at the top. It's not that it looks bad. It's just when you hold it in your hand, it feels kind of 
cheap. So this one's very woody and spicy. It's got cumin, cardamom, cedar, uh, the tea note that I spoke about before, and a little bit of bergamot in there as well. So again, woody, spicy, going to appeal more to middle-aged guys once again with this fragrance, just like the Cartier that it smells very similar to. One good thing about this scent though, is it is much more affordable at discounters than the Cartier. Uh, Cartier Declaration, a lot of people love that. They think it's a wonderful scent, which it is, but you don't have to spend that much to get something similar to it. You could go with this. Now a cheap 4711 Lemon and Ginger. This is from their Aqua Colonia line. Notes are on the front, Lemon and Ginger. That's it. On the front, it says this fragrance is vitalizing. Each one of these Aqua Colonia fragrances has uh, one word that I guess is supposed to describe how it should make you feel vitalized with this one. The lemon is almost candied, very sweet, and that's really pretty much what you're getting here. It's simple, it's bare bones, but it'll get the job done. Well, it'll get the job done uh, other than the performance. It'll get the job done in the sense that it smells really nice while you can smell it. It is a 4711 though, so that is expected and you don't have to pay all that much to get a big bottle. This one is 170 milliliters. So just go crazy and spray yourself like a madman. It is an eau de cologne. It will not offend anybody. Just citrus and ginger. It smells simple and nice. Last but not least, Yves Saint Laurent, Jazz. I also got this bottle of Jazz. I need to get one of the, the older bottles, older than this, the OG bottle. One day, one day, not today, but one day. Got the notes on the side of the bottle here, or uh, no, the Accords, excuse me. It includes cypress, patchouli, coriander, and geranium. This is gonna give you that old school masculine style. Yeah, it just smells, <laughs> it smells grown up, you know? Came out in 1988, it says so on the side of my bottle here. So you've got whispers of that old school barbershop style to it. Very masculine, very grown, very mature. Nowadays, not one of the more popular fragrances in this style, I would say, but as a late 80s fragrance that still carries great versatility, I think jazz is a wonderful choice. And if you're a collector of older bottles, you got a bunch of different ones to go for here. You get this one, then you can get the one with the uh, black over it, same bottle shape and style. You can get this bottle, then you can get the bottle that came before that. You can get a splash, you can get a spray, you can get a big old jazz collection going with these. And that's gonna wrap this video up. 10 unappreciated or maybe underappreciated fragrances. Each one of these I like a lot. Really good stuff here. Well guys, thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.